Hello students, welcome to online biology class. Today we are going to cover day uh, 9 of chapter 3. Every day you will be attending the online class and doing the homework of that day. Make sure that you have your textbook and notebook all the times while you attend the class. You will have a synchronized session where you can interact and clarify your doubts. I hope children you are ready with your home assessment uh, given you in the last class. What will be your home assignment given? The first question is write briefly about evolution of transport system and then the second question is write down the difference between open type and closed type of circulatory system. Right? So this was about the previous classes uh, what we have studied is about transport system or uh, circulatory system of uh, human beings and also how the transport system is different in different uh, organisms. Right? Now, so in this uh, chapter we have studied that transport system it is useful in transporting the useful materials and also from one place of the body to another place like nutrients it carries from the digestive system to all the other cells. Similarly, the waste products, whatever that is being produced, these waste products are being eliminated. That means what it is being collected and it is being given to the excretory system. And even we have seen this blood helps in transport of gases. So this is what mainly the transport system is going to do. So like this, various organisms are there and in various organisms transport system is being present. In few of the organisms, transport system is very simple and in few other organisms, transport system is complicated, right? So that means what, if you see in protozoans and also in case of porifera, the uh, transport system is very simple and whereas when it is being coming to mammals, it is very complicated. Now like this, all the animals, they require transport system to carry the materials, so whether they may be useful or they may be excretory okay so to carry from one part to another part transport system is very essential now do the same way plants also have transport system right so now to say this yes plants also have a transport system plants also undergo transportation now what are the materials plant is going to be transported just think of yes right what are the materials plants required to transport one is water second is minerals and similarly plant also need to transport the food materials what are being prepared in the leaves so like this this material should be transported from one place to another place now how this transport is being taking place in the plants now let us try to understand in today's class so what is our aim and objective of today's class is to learn or to know about transportation in plants. Now, so we have seen what are the different things plant they should be transported within the plant world, right? So I hope you have studied in your class standard uh, 9, you have studied about the different types of plant tissues, right? So what are the, the how many types of plant tissues are there? They are majorly four different types of plant tissues. In that ground, uh, in that vascular tissue is one of the type of the tissues. You have studied there xylem and the phloem are the two types of tissues which helps in transportation of plants. Right? So xylem helps in conduction of water, we have studied, and phloem helps in translocation of food materials. That means what it helps in translocating food material from leaf or other green stem to other portions of the plant. So like this, xylem and phloem they are helping. Of course, you know they are tissues, they are not type, they are not made up of only one type of cells. So you have seen that xylem contains xylem mesons, xylem tracheids, xylem parenchyma, xylem fiber. So even the same way phloem also contains companion cells, phloem fibers, isn't it? So tracheids, so like that, the four different types of cells, the phloem is So group of uh, cells that contain therefore we call xylem is a tissue and also a phloem is also a tissue 
And when you cut uh, the root and also when you cut the shoot, I hope you have observed the transfer section of root and transfer section of stem in your class 9. You have seen that xylem vessels in case of root, they are outside, isn't it? Right? Xylem are exterior. You have seen this is the vascular bundle and then you have seen so xylem vessel, xylem is being present outside in case of roots, right? They are exterior. Even if it is in case of stem, what you have seen, the xylem vessels, they are interior, right? So this is what you have seen in case of uh, root and also stem. So in case of roots, xylem vessels are exterior and phloem is interior, whereas in case of stem, so xylem vessels are interior and phloem vessels are exterior. They are being located in that. So this is what we have studied in your class in mind. Now let us try to see, right? We are saying that yes, xylem is helping in conduction of water, xylem is helping in conduction of water. How do this xylem is helping in conduction of water? And uh, we need to even know uh, uh, how it should it be that uh, uh, we need to find out that xylem is the vascular bundle, so xylem is the tissue which is going to conduct the water. For this reason, right, I hope you have studied, yes, uh, uh, water and minerals are needed by the plant body. We have already dealt here uh, uh, in case of chapter 1 and also you have studied in your class 7 about one Helmont experiment, right. So, he has made the plant to avail only with a rainwater. When rainwater is being available to the plant, with the help of those rainwater only, the seed is being germinated and the plant is being grown, right? And the plant is being uh, en enormously grown and it has been put up its weight. So that means what something plant is obtaining that is from water and also minerals. So water and minerals are necessary for plants for its growth and development. And how this water and minerals are being transported? That is by xylem. Now to understand that, only xylem is the tissue or xylem is the vascular bundle which is transporting this water. So first we need to take a balsam. Actually why we need to select this balsam plant is, so black, balsam plant has got very trans, uh, translucent stems. Right? Any interior changes are going to happen, you can easily visible. That is the reason you need to take what it is called as the balsam plant you need to take. You need to take a beaker and you need to fill the beaker with water. You need to add a little amount of potassium permanganate into the balsam, uh, what, uh, sorry, into the beaker containing water. Then you need to place the balsam plant into the beaker containing potassium permanganate. You know, potassium permanganate, it distributes throughout the water and water turns into purple color, right? Then, as you leave the balsam plant in this beaker, so you can see the, what it is called as uh, purple streaks of lines you can find on the stem of the balsam plant. So, and this shows, and when you cut, and when you see the transfer section of stem of balsam plant, you can see that xylem vessels. In, in case of roots, you can see exteriorly, and in case of stem, you can see interiorly. So that is under the purple in color. So this shows that water is being connected one by one type of tissue, and that tissue is called as xylem tissue. Now, how this uh, is going to happen and how this is going to exactly happen, we can even take some other activity. For that activity, you need to take a filter paper, you need to make the filter paper flat, you need to uh, leave some uh, mustard seeds on the filter paper and you can see mustard seeds, they are going to be germinated, right? Fine thread like structures, right? The like cotton, linens, whatever that is going to be present. So such type of structures you can find on the uh, moist filter paper. And uh, you need to take two glass slides and you need to compress this root like structures and uh, where you need to add little bit amount of water drop and place a cover strip and when you observe under the microscope you can see the root heads are very thin. Right? You can see the root and uh, next you can see the root heads they are very thin. 
that means what easily the substances can be entered that, uh, with to the uh, semi permeable membrane such a structure is that. actually the entire mechanism how this water and minerals they are entering into the plant body so that is not being known surely but it is clearly understood that osmosis plays an important role in helping the water right in transporting the water so just i have told you the water plant you can see the streaks of lines with the help of purple, purple color so this is a picture which represents that so the streaks of uh, xylem uh, right which has been turned into purple which is supplying the water and minerals to what it is called as leaves and other parts of the plant right and as i told you osmosis plays an important role in transportation of this water and minerals now let us see so how osmosis plays an important role in transportation or help, helps our yields in entry of water into the plant you can look after the so this is the lateral section of the root you can see xylem vessels right i told you as i told you they are exterior right then you can see few cells these are the cortical cells you can see all these cells these are the cortical cells which makes up the ground tissue and you can see the epidermal cells the outer layer of the cells that is called as epidermis and the epidermal cells they give rise to fine hair like structures which are called as root tissues right so xylem then next cortical cells epidermal cells from the epidermal cells root hairs are going to come out right so you can see uh, the ground in the cells the cytoplasm is very uh, speeds where the little amount of cytoplasm is there and this cytoplasm is towards the walls Right? You can see nucleus which is present in the cytoplasm. As these are the mature cells, entirely this is being occupied by vacuole. Right? Even you can see uh, root hairs also. You can see complete it is being occupied by vacuole. Right? Spare cytoplasm is being present and also a nucleus is also being present. Now, so this is root hair is entering into the soil. You can look after all these things are the soil particles, and the root hair is entering into the soil particle. Right? So xylem, lab, cortical cells, the next epidermal cells. From epidermal cells, root hair is passing into the soil particles. And in the soil particles, you can see air spaces are being present. We find that soil particles they are there, but in between them, air spaces are going to be present. Microscopic air spaces. So now cytoplasm, you know that it is majorly with the help of water. That means uh, some of the dissolved salts are also going to be present. So that means what it is having with some of its a concentration, right? So now what we are going to do? We water the plant. We do the water into the soil. Now so the water is being made to pass through the air spaces. And then surrounding the soil particle also, water is going to be present. We call such water as soil water. And this soil water is being available to the plants. Right? You shouldn't think so. As much as water you are going to pour, complete water is being taken by the plants. Very little bit amount of water is being taken, and most of them they are going to be evaporated, and some of them they will be percolated. Some of them they are being Retained in the form of soil water. Now, if the soil water is going to be present, and the soil is also with some amount of mineral and nutrients, and therefore soil water is also with some certain concentration. Now, inside the cytoplasm is also with certain concentration, and the soil water is also with certain concentration. But the concentration of uh, what it is called as cytoplasm is high, and the concentration of Uh, in soil water is low. Now, therefore, water moving from low concentration to high concentration reach through what through a semi-permeable membrane. So, therefore, our osmosis, right? Osmosis is being defined as transportation of water from low solvent region to uh, sorry, lower concentration region to higher concentration region. Through a semi-permeable membrane. 
So this is what is going to happen in case of uh, transport, uh, in case of absorption of water and minerals by the roots. So like this, water is being absorbed, right? From the lower concentration to higher concentration. Now as water enters here, now it is being diluted. Now complete this cell cytoplasm is going to be diluted when compared to the adjacent cells. Now this water has entered into this, water has entered into the vacuoles and the cytoplasm becomes dilute compared to the cytoplasm of the adjacent cells. Therefore, water from, right, so these epidermal cells, they are entering into the adjacent. Right? Now these adjacent cells, the concentration once again it is going to be diluted compared to the adjacent cells. Now finally the water molecules they are entering into the xylem and from xylem right, it is being transported through the entire plant body. Right? So what we were discussing, right? as we are watering the plant here. So, some amount of water is being retained in the form of soil water and this soil water is being available to the plant. Now, the cytoplasm is with certain concentration and the concentration of this cytoplasm is very high comparing to the concentration of the soil water. Therefore, the water enters from uh, what it is called as low concentration region to high concentration region. It enters into the vacuole of epidermal cells and it makes that into low concentration. So now it becomes dilute when compared to the adjacent cells. So like that it passes into the cortical cells and it passes finally into the xylem and from xylem it is being transported to the aerial. So this is how, so water is being observed by the plants, right? So, and this water is being transported by the plant to entire world, right? So, actually, for your today's home assignment is write briefly about absorption of water by plants, write briefly about absorption of water by plants, right? I'll be giving you a minute to copy this diagram into your textbook. Uh, sorry, notebook. Thank you, children. Have a nice day.